Hi, I'm Luke, Bike Gearhead here, and today we're going to be talking about power meters. If you're new to the cycling world, you might not even kind of know what they are. If you're more of an experienced rider or somebody who's kind of been in the game for a minute, you at least know what they are and you might even, even have one. So what we're going to talk about today is basically what a power meter is, what the benefits of a power meter are, and then we're going to dive into the specific kind of systems that exist out in the power meter marketplace. The first thing is, what is a power meter? Uh, a power meter is an electronic device that, believe it or not, is measuring the strain and the, the stretch that's being placed on the metal components, either on your crank or on your pedals, depending on the system that you use. So it has a little strain, electronic strain gauge in it that, that's accurate enough that it can measure tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of deflection in the metal of the component that it's attached to and kind of translate that into a power number, which usually is measured in watts. Because of the different styles of systems, most systems have kind of benefits and drawbacks, and there are some that are better, better for some riders and some that are better for other riders. Before we get into that, we'll, we'll dive into like why you would use a power meter. There's a couple different reasons. The main reason is if you're a more experienced rider or if you're a racer or if you're somebody who has a very dedicated training plan, power is the most accurate way to measure your fitness level and to measure your workout zones, for lack of a better term. Um, some people use heart rate, but power is, is much more accurate. It's gonna give you a much more precise training program. The other reason to get it is if, frankly, you're just kind of a numbers nerd and you wanna see kind of what sort of power you're putting out on a ride, or if you wanna brag to your buddies when you're doing your weekend ride and say, yeah, I did 250 watts for et cetera. They're not for everybody, but they can have some benefits if they're being used correctly. So. There are four kind of main styles of power meters that are out on the market today. Um, there is a fifth, which are like hub-based power meters, but those are pretty rare at this point. So we're just gonna talk about the four styles that we have in front of us. The first style we're gonna talk about is the crank arm-based power meter. This one is made by 4i, and you can either buy this as a whole crank set, we just have the non-drive arm here, or if you have a Shimano or uh, other, they, they do these for other brands too, I believe they do them for SRAM cranks and Campanillo cranks as well. You can send away your crank arm to have them install a power meter on it. The benefits of this system are it's relatively inexpensive, which is really nice. So if you're like, you're not sure you wanna really dive into power meters, but you are kind of curious about them, this is a really good way to do it. The drawbacks are that it only measures one leg, so it's only gonna give you the power of, of your non-drive arm, or, or leg rather. So it's gonna take your single leg power, multiply by two, give you your total out power output. Great system to kind of get yourself into the power meter marketplace without spending too much money. Stages also does um, a crank arm style power meter. The next style is going to be a spindle-based power meter. So we have here a SRAM dub system spindle-based power meter. This one is a mountain bike. Uh, power meter. They also do this for their road bike. This is nice because it's a really easy um, and relatively inexpensive upgrade for anyone who has a SRAM style crank on their bike as long as it has a dub spindle on it. So this will not work for the older style GXP spindle style. The benefits of this are it is a little bit more accurate than the crank arm based power meter and it's pretty easy to install um, if your current crank just has a standard hollow spindle in it all you do is unbolt the drive side pop this one back in reinstall this one is again same as this one basically single leg power and then it multiplies by two gives you your total power output so if you want to be really really specific with your training that may be a drawback because you're not getting individual leg power the other benefits of this is it does have a removable battery off of this little cap right here. It's just like a AAA battery that's housed inside the spindle. I mean, the battery life on them is pretty, pretty excellent. So that's gonna be your second style of power meter. The third style and the one that's mo the most kind of involved is a spider-based power meter. You can see in here that this, this kind of spot that's blocked off by plastic is where the electronics are housed here. This is a SRAM, uh, 
quark. It's, it's a quark, but it's made by, by SRAM. And what you do is on this side, you can see there are these eight bolts here. So what you do is if you have a SRAM crank that doesn't have power on it and you want to install power, you would just remove these eight bolts with your existing non-power spider and then bolt the power meter spider onto here, torque them all to spec, and you're good to go. The benefits of this one are it's considered to be the most accurate um, power meter out there. The downsides are it typically is a little bit more expensive because as you can see, this is a one piece design. So you're not only buying the power meter, you're also buying the, the chain rings themselves. SRAM does make a spider based power meter that does not come with chain rings. So you can bolt your own chain rings on there. But this particular instance, it's gonna be typically the most expensive but also the most accurate. Another benefit of the spider-based power meter is that it gives you left-right power. So it'll actually measure the individual leg output of your legs when you're riding. Uh, the benefit of that is a lot of modern cycling computers will use power balance on them and they have that as an available feature. So if you have like an imbalanced pedal stroke, so say you're putting out more power with your right leg than your left leg or vice versa, it'll recognize that and you can use that as an opportunity to even out your pedal stroke and make it more round. So if you wanna be really specific about your training regimen, this is a great one to have. And then the last option are power meter pedals. We have here uh, mountain style power meter pedals. These are made by Garmin. These are also available in like a road style with like a SPDSL kind of three volt cleat pattern. This is the two volt cleat pattern. The benefits of this system are they do give you the obviously left right power. Uh, you can also buy these if you want to save a little bit of money with a power meter just in one pedal. And that one it does what the, the crank arm and the spindle base does is it multiplies by two and extrapolates. But if you want a true uh, two leg power, you can buy these with power meters in each pedal. The benefits of these are they're easily swappable from bike to bike. So if you have multiple bikes that you wanna have power on, but you don't wanna pay for a power meter for every single bike, you can buy one set of pedals and move them from bike to bike, which is a nice option. The downsides of these are they are typically relatively pricey, similar in cost to the spider-based power meter system. But the benefits there, in my opinion, kind of outweigh the costs that the, the functionality of being able to move it from bike to bike. If you only have one bike, it's not a concern, but just something to consider when you're looking at a pedal-based power meter. One final thing to note with power meters is uh, obviously a big question would be how do they connect to your computer? All of these here in front of us are both Bluetooth and Ant Plus compatible. So they work with pretty much any modern uh, cycling computer. Obviously they're not gonna work with those little like wired ones that just do speed and cadence, but anything that's power meter ready any of these will sync up to really, really easily um, and, and work great. They'll even uh, work with like uh, some fitness watches as well. So tons of uh, capability there. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned a little something about power meters and maybe they're a little bit more approachable for you now, something you consider for your training schedule. Uh, if you have any questions about these or are interested in purchasing one, feel free to reach out to our GearHead team. We would also appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed to our YouTube channel. And if you have any like ideas about stuff, the Tech Tips series is like, it's still a new idea for us. So we're always looking for new content, new things to talk about. So if there's something you want us to discuss or want us to go over, uh, drop a comment down below. And if you like it, we'll make a video. We'll see you on the next one.